I'm going to take the time to respond to some of the video responses I've been getting to some of my recent videos. And also I'm going to talk about some random crap. First response is going to go to Mr. Exactly, who has been patiently waiting for over a month now. He made a response to the video I made about why I wasn't being approached by many upper echelon black men. And he basically flipped the question around and asked why he wasn't able to find an upper echelon black woman. He said something like he worked with 34 other black men who were also with non-black women and asked why that was. Well, of course, without knowing those men, I can't answer your question about them specifically. But what I did find interesting is that on both sides, black men and black women who are upper echelon, they both seem to say that their counterparts don't want them. <laughs> That's funny. And I also hear from the black men, well, when I go to work, I don't see any black women. And the black women say, well, when I go to work, I don't see any black men. So I guess the answer is that we're just missing each other. What I found out from the responses that I got is that apparently upper echelon black men have a lot of women hitting on them of all races, so I guess they just choose from the women who are hitting on them. So I would be interested to know if you want to just leave a comment, did you hit on your girl or did she hit on you? But anyway, I guess that's it. I guess we're just missing each other. But anyway, carry on. Just make the best of it with whomever you attract or whoever attracts you. Alright, next person, SWP Disciple. He had made a comment that even though it may sound far-fetched that women and coochie do motivate men, that it is true that most men do what they do with the hopes of eventually attracting a female. Well, absolutely, I don't disagree with that. A man who goes to college and gets a degree in hotel restaurant management, he's going because he wants a career and he wants to make decent money, and also possibly because he wants to be the boss and not just another employee, but then also he's thinking of getting a wife and having money to be able to support a family. That's one thing. But this idea that some people have, and I'm not talking about you, this idea that you can make men become better men by withholding coochie, that's ridiculous. Because first of all, there's a difference between wanting a woman and wanting some cooch. Perhaps it might work if a guy wants a specific woman, but if he just wants coochie, it won't work. If the man wants the woman, then if she says, if you finish college, I'll marry you, or if she says, if you stay in school, I'll date you, then as long as he stays in school working toward that goal, then she can see him. If he starts to fall off or drops out of school or whatever, then she can say, okay, I can't see you anymore. See, you can reward someone with your presence, but then take it away. Coochie, on the other hand. All right, same scenario, except this time the woman says, if you stay in school, I'll sleep with you. So if the guy goes in and rolls in school, when do you sleep with him? Right then or when he graduates? Graduation is two to four years away, so he's going to say, fuck it, that's too long to wait. And if you sleep with him too soon, then he gets what he wants and he's got no more motivation. And really, once you sleep with a guy, your sex bargaining chip is gone forever. A lot of guys are just happy with hitting it once and then moving on to somebody else. So unless he likes the girl, you can't really motivate a man long term with pussy. And a lot of these thug men out here that people think that they can use coochie lockdown to reform don't even want wives. They don't even want steady women. Part of their manhood is based on getting with a whole bunch of females. So if a guy doesn't have some kind of inner motivation on his own, dangling cooch over his head isn't going to help. Because if you dangle it too high and he thinks he'll never get it, he'll give up. But then once he gets it, he'll stop progressing. Also, the thing about the Asian girl who refused to date the black guy unless he stayed on the honor roll. One thing that got past me that I realize now is that Sergeant Willie Pete said her parents were also telling this guy that he couldn't date her without uh, being on the honor roll. So proper parenting instilled that rule in that girl. Her parents, especially being that they're Asian, probably instilled in her at a very young age the importance of good grades. So her holding her boyfriend to a standard should be attributed more to her parents than her. Moving along, I wanted to respond to something somebody else said, but they're a little bit paranoid about me. So I'm just going to leave the kid's name out of it, okay, brother? All right, Brian White, the actor, got married a little bit over a month ago to a Latina woman, and it set off a shitstorm with the black women. That was to be expected, no surprise there, and I'm talking about the fact that the black woman had a problem with it, not the fact that he got with a, a Latina girl. But what I didn't like is how he responded to it. There were some black men, I guess they were, who posted some comments on his page and he retweeted them. One of them said something about them popping out flawless babies. And of course the black women took this to mean that they were going to be flawless simply because they were half non-black. I will give the person that tweeted that the benefit of the doubt and assume that they mean that it was because they were both attractive. But again, of course, that's not the meaning that most people got out of it. Here's what I don't like. Brian retweeted that with the sorry-ass disclaimer that, oh, these are not my words, I'm just retweeting it. Okay, that's fine, but why would you retweet something if you don't agree with it? If somebody posted a comment on my page right now that said, I hate white people, 
Why would I take that comment and put it over in my description box, even if I followed it up with a disclaimer saying, oh, these aren't my words, I'm just reposting them? People are going to think that's how I really feel, and they should feel that way. Because why the hell else would you retweet something like that unless you believed in it? So, Brian, we're not stupid. That's how you really feel, or else you wouldn't have retweeted. I am very familiar with the practice of if you don't feel like you have the freedom to say something yourself, you go find somebody else who says the same thing and let them say it, and then you can blame it on them. Penn and Teller, two of my favorite atheists, did that very same thing on the show they did about reparations. They made a show about how reparations are bullshit. And there were some things that they wanted to say in the show, but they felt they were too white to say it, and they even said that they felt they were too white to say it, so they went and found a black guy to say it. So, Brian, if you feel that way, have the balls to come out and say it. Don't hide behind somebody else. All right, moving along, some people ask me what I think about Eddie Long. Well, first of all, I didn't even know who this guy was till he hit the news a couple of weeks ago. Frankly, I can't really think of anything to say about it that hasn't already been said. I can't really say I'm surprised when I find out that any pastor's been getting some on the side. The gay thing still does throw me for a loop, especially since a lot of times these guys tend to be very anti-gay. But anyway, when you're in a high-profile position, you're going to attract a lot of women. Or in his case, he acquired enough power to influence these boys to, um, service him, I guess you'd say. It's a lot like what Tiger Woods said. A lot of times when people get high up and they get a lot of power, they start to think that the rules don't apply to them. They start to think that they can get away with all sorts of crazy crap. But I really am going to have to call Eddie Long a stupid motherfucker if he did text those pictures to those boys. Let's say there was a murder and the killer left his fingerprints all over the crime scene. Texting those pictures to those boys was like leaving your driver's license at the crime scene. But anyway, I guess all I've got to say about this whole scandal is, this is the kind of stuff that happens when people have a lot of power. I think most of the pastors of these mega churches probably have some skeleton bones in their closets that we may or may not ever know about. 